I failed my first programming assignment, and it straight up made me want to drop out. This is a bench of right Where I lay down just like this, sort of dropping out. Just for two seconds, I dropped a single third tier. Now I get paid to code every single day. All I did was change how I approached the learning process. Some of this advice might not be what you want to hear, but it will take years off of your learning journey. Without this step, you waste countless hours of your life. You have to decide that you're sick of where you are, tired of doing half a course and then stopping, or being disciplined for two weeks and then falling off. You have to decide you're sick of that cycle and that you're ready to actually do it this time. You have to decide that you're fully committed on this path to become a data scientist. You need to avoid this fatal error that every programmer has made on their learning journey. When you're in your programming class or deep into your self-taught journey, this will happen. The instructor will introduce a concept like what a list is and you don't quite grasp the concept. But you lie to yourself that you do understand it well enough to push forward and onto the next concept because you're obsessed with becoming a programmer in the shortest time frame possible. You've already made the fatal error because you're trying to build a skyscraper on a foundation of toothpicks. Lying to yourself that you understand a topic when you you haven't will come back to bite you. You end up as somebody who kind of understands a lot of concepts but can't put together an end-to-end -end project which is what you need as an employee or even to build your own projects. My honest advice, if you are somebody with a shaky foundation, don't be afraid to start over. It feels like you're moving backwards but it's better to restart once and then build solidly rather than getting through a three-month course and then realizing that you know nothing. So how do we replace our horrific foundation with a solid one? What we're not going to do is start paying for every course under the sun. A different course won't be the solution because 99% of the time, the course is not the problem. My first course was Python programming from DataCamp and I hated the way that they gamified the entire process. They were more concerned with making you feel like you're making rapid progress than actually making you understand these difficult concepts. And I hated DataCamp for a long time because of that. So I did some research to find the one true course that would teach me Python forever, but all of the online courses pretty much taught in the same way, and the ones that didn't had disadvantages of their own. So my life changed when I stopped blaming the course and started taking accountability. And I'll tell you how to actually make these courses useful in a second, but the first thing I need you to do is some research and then pick one course. If you're doing Python for data science, look into these. After that, pick just one language to learn. As a newbie, it's tempting to be like, yeah, I'm going to learn my entire stack simultaneously, but you just end up kind of like the sun. Just kind of chilling, keeping everything reasonably warm, but by taking 100% of your focus and putting it on a single programming language, it's like adding a magnifying glass to that sun and in seconds you begin to burn through all of your problems. So why do I hate the way that sites codify gaming? I mean, it makes it fun and easy, right? Which is what you want. Actually, easy is the last thing that you want. So there's this concept called arousal. No, not that type of arousal. I mean the one used in sports psychology. It's basically the level of motivation that you have for a match. So let's say I said you had to play a tennis match against Rafael Nadal in front of 50,000 people and that match is not for fun and he's not taking it easy on you. After one or two points, your motivation will drop to zero because the skill gap is just too much. You have no chance and you'll be completely demoralized. But on the other end of that spectrum, let's say this match was against a three-year-old in the middle of nowhere with nobody watching. Again, you'd have the same problem because after a point or two, you'd be incredibly bored because the kid can't even return a ball. It would become too easy of a task. And that's what happens with a lot of these coding sites because they try to make it too easy and it becomes a glorified fill in the blank challenge. So what that ends up meaning is that you don't really learn. What you actually want is this middle phase, where you're either at the same level or slightly worse than the opponent or the task at hand, where you know if you do your absolute best, then you have a chance of winning. This leads to the optimal arousal or the optimal level of motivation. And the same thing happens when you're learning academic or technical concepts. And in Make It Stick, which is the best book on academic learning and how to make it effective, the authors make the same point. To gain mastery, a student needs to have desirable difficulty when learning a new skill. So if you ever feel stuck or programming feels difficult, but vaguely possible, that's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean you're dumb. That's just you actively engaging with the learning material. So to engage in effortful learning in programming, you must take advantage of the generation effect. So think of it this way, if you had an exam tomorrow and you only had 8 hours to prepare and you tried to do this, for 8 hours essentially trying to download the contents of a whole textbook, 
into your brain, that exam would not end well for you. But let's say you had even half that time available and what you had was a bunch of flashcards, each one with a question on one side, the answer on the other side, and you would sort of quiz yourself, read the questions, try to think of the answer and then confirm, you would pass that exam almost every single time. That's because when you ask yourself questions, you're forcing yourself to retrieve from your memory rather than just passively reading words on a piece of paper. But when it comes to programming, we don't care about memorizing syntax. So how do we do this for us? Well, we do this through project-based learning and I promise you it will make you learn four times faster. So whenever you learn two to three new concepts, I want you to actively apply those in a real world project. So let's say you just learned about how to read an Excel file, how to define functions and how lists work. You could do a great project doing that and I'll show you right now. So you have to give yourself the example. So what if I had an Excel file full of employee names and my boss wanted to automate giving each one of those a 5% raise? Well, with the skills that you currently have, have, you could write a function like this step by step and efficiency wouldn't matter just worry about each individual step with the skills you learn you're reading your excel file and you also have the ability to add five percent to it as we can see over here so just like that you're now implementing the concepts that you have learned the problem with this approach though is what happens if you don't understand the concepts that you've just learned this is where augmentation comes in. By this, I mean not being solely reliant on what you're being taught in your course. Your course should serve as the spine of your learning. But when you do encounter concepts that you struggle with and you need more time on these, these are the four resources that you need, nothing else. I mainly use YouTube. You just need to do a little bit of digging around to find a creator who's great at explaining things in ways that you understand. And they become sort of like your backup option. If you can't find a creator or even a medium article that resonates with you, that's when ChatGPT comes in. Because you can ask it to explain topics in a really dumbed down manner or to use analogies that you understand. And if you're wondering why I don't just consult our AI overlords straight away, it's because there's a big chance of falling into the illusion of learning again rather than actually learning. You might end up just reading the answer and go, yeah, that kind of makes sense. But in reality, you've retained 0% of that. So once you've augmented your weak spots, go back to your project and see if you now know how to solve it. So once you finish your last project, the next step is to add new skills in an intelligent way. So going back to our example from before, what if the next stage with our salary increase was to learn control flows? So I want you to get into the habit of expanding on your existing knowledge. So let's say instead of just giving everybody a blanket 5% raise, your boss wanted to give everybody except the sales department a 5% raise. Instead for the sales department, they now get a 10% cut of every commission that they get. All you'd have to do is to then add a conditional element to that function from before. And all of a sudden we're building skills on top of skills. And that's where your learning begins to become exponential. You need to keep your long-term vision in your head at all times. If this is the path that you truly want to go down, who cares if it takes you three months longer to learn programming than the other guy? Be disciplined, but don't punish yourself for being slow at times. Time plus persistence equals scary results. But something that you might struggle with when you're learning these concepts is focus. So I have a whole video here showing you how you can focus intensely. 